What is up, guys? I am out of focus. Hey, what is up, guys? We are back with a brand new video, and this one's going to be kind of cool. We're going to be talking about different systems that can cost different amounts of money. We're going to talk about stereo systems. We're going to be talking about home theater systems, talk about car audio, home audio. And as always, we're still taking questions. So if you have a question, make sure to throw it in there. If you have a super chat, you know we'll get to you no matter what. No matter what, ask the questions. I'm, I'm excited about this one. What about you, Justin? I am excited. I feel a little underprepared at the moment because there's this, the list we could create could be infinitely mm. long. I, absolutely. Yep. Hey, living loud with Andy. Finally made it. Andy, congratulations on picking up the trash of Justin Fields. Was your Steelers? <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, oh. That's a yeah. Oh, you know, it's funny. I have a bunch of friends who are like, Justin Fields is the most amazing quarterback ever. The Bears are idiots. And um, I I don't. I, I disagree. So <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. But the they also Bears. have Russell Wilson. So they're good. Yeah. The Steelers. Yeah. The, uh, the notorious RVH is in the crowd. So it's good to see some familiar voices. The true voice of reason. Some familiar faces, I suppose. Hey, Yep. Yep. Yeah. All right, guys. So. Like I said, if you have a question, make sure to ask it down in the comment section below. It doesn't have to necessarily pertain to this topic. As long as it's like DIY related on DIY audio of some kind, some forth, we'll do that. So, all right, Justin, car audio is interesting. Same with home audio, because when we talk about systems, a complete system is like a head unit, speakers, subwoofer, amplifiers, <sighs> and everything. But it's it's too hard to break it down to like I would buy all of this. It's so I think we're gonna break it down more like by components because most people aren't doing the entire system at once, right? Right, and that's tricky um, because you have different priorities when you when you put your system together. Absolutely. And so the easy thing to do is say, let's just break it down into parts. How much do you want to spend on your mids and highs? How much do you want to spend on the head unit? How much do you want to spend on the subwoofer and the amplifier, et cetera, et cetera? I have no idea why I'm furry. My, my, my view here is crisp and clean. That we've been talking about this for a while. We think it is my internet because it seems that the quality that I'm streaming at is not up to full 720p. And 720p is the max I can stream through this interface. So. What are you going to do? Yeah, what can you do? So, yeah. So what do you think most people are buying first? If it was you and you had a car system, what would be the first piece of equipment that you would probably upgrade? And what I price? I don't point? know what people buy first, but I know what is the first thing on someone's mind. The first thing that a, <laughs> a young person, an old person, uh, <laughs> That's interesting to upgrade their car audio. The first thing they look at is their subwoofer. Now it's hard to write out and write in and upgrade the subwoofer because you need some way to get signal to an aftermarket mm -hmm. amplifier. So you're buying a line output converter at that time, or you're going to upgrade the head unit if you even can in a modern car. So a good place to so start would be a line output converter basically takes the rear signal of the speakers and then converts it to an RCA. So you can have a subwoofer out. Is that right? Right, right. So you, you do a recommend channel. If you have a sedan, for example, you do a two channel line output converter and just hook up to the back speakers. You can reach in the trunk to do it. There are a lot of things you get to worry about that because some factory radios like to um, <laughs> um, like to like to take some of that bass out of those speakers so you don't blow them. So maybe you need something a little uh, more complicated, like something from audio control. Uh, most audio controls line output converters have their, I think it's called, I think they call it. This is basically where you can, um, well, three stereo systems in a car, when you, you don't call you, they will actively to frequencies. It's <laughs> so, a DSP. Um, uh, basically something like that. And then um, it will undo that for you. And so oftentimes you're going to end up buying an expensive line out converter to pull that off. And honestly, like there are knockoff brands, which are going to be expensive. 
So that's something you've always got to so, deal with. So it's kind of hard to say, here's what a budget system would cost. Here's your budget system. Plus you might need. An yeah, because ADR each vehicle is different. Right. Yeah. Right. And each vehicle is different. So I want, I want to touch up on this. Jeff Schneider said you need some Chiare in your life, which by the way, you have to say it. Actually, when you say you're going to be like Chiare, you got, you got to do like the hand signal with it. Uh, I've been told that by Jeff Schneider, who works with Chiare, and uh, and it's kind of funny. Audio is jacked. Oh, okay. And it's kind of funny because the, he actually just posted a video of a mm, motorcycle event with some Chiare speakers. Man, those things sounded so good on that motorcycle. Surprised me how good it sounded on that motorcycle, to be honest with you. Right. So I'm echoing too. So apparently my is uh, really messing everything up. Huh. I don't, I don't hear that, that for some reason. So anyway, so it depends on that. So what, what would be one of the things on your list? Well, I'm going to do a quick, a quick screen share here and I'm going to show you a thing that, um, that I think is, this uh, is an appropriate thing. Yes. I'm going to show you something appropriate. Okay. Um, so okay. this right here is, I've, I've got the 12 inch version of this. This is the 10 inch version. So this is Stinger's uh, fab box loaded with a subwoofer. I forget the price on this. I think it's 190 or, or something about like that. This is a really good box with a good subwoofer in it for 190 bucks. And then if you scroll down to the bottom of the Amazon page, it'll give you the whole buy this with these items. So you can get the amp that pairs with it for 120 and then a really good four gauge amp for 46. That puts you at 355 bucks for your wire, uh, an amp and a driver in a box, which is honestly for quality stuff like this, you're going to have a hard time getting cheaper than this. Really? You can find cheaper. Um, you can for get like value system. though. Yeah, you can do a SCAR system that's similar to this with, um, you know, lower quality wire, uh, not as good an amplifier, a little less quality speaker, and you can get a SCAR system about like this for 300 That's cheap, though. For $355, that is cheap. That actually, I, so that's that's pretty awesome. So someone actually said, Tony J said he bought this and rewired the sub for 4 ohm. I'm not okay. sure. Uh, is that a, uh, I guess that's a dual... Yeah, yeah. Is it it's a dual, dual two-ohm subwoofer, okay. and it's wired internally nice. to one-ohm. So, yeah, you can take it and rewire it. So if you already have a, a four-ohm stable amp, you know, you don't have to live with it. Um, <laughs> I found when I was working with my box, and they had taken some, what did they call that stuff, Loctite, and put on the screws or something. So I had a hard time getting the screws out. I actually stripped a couple of them out. But, hey, it's all good. They're staying in there. They're not coming out accidentally, that's for sure. <laughs> There you go. Stinger. I, I got to be honest, did not see that one coming at all. So, so do you I'm know gonna... the backstory behind Stinger? Do you know, you know who they are? Yeah, they're a music group. <laughs> uh, everyone well, that's that. Sting, the wrestler. Wait a second. No. Um, so, so we mentioned the audio control stuff. The same company owns Stinger that owns audio control. They're the same. The same company owns them both. Oh, really? So this um, is kind of like their lower you, line. It's like Dayton Audio know. who owns GRS. And GRS is kind of their right. cheap line. From what I can tell looking at their marketing, Stinger appears to be aiming their marketing at the thing they've always done that interconnects the wires, the fuse boxes and stuff like that. They seem to be kind of aiming the Stinger towards an off-road brand. So, gotcha. for example, they sell enclosures that mount on your your Jeep door, right? The back door of a Jeep for the rear, um, the rear. Yeah, Sean Lynn has it right. Stinger is audio control. It's pack electronics, right? So, I want to just give a shout out to Molin Performance Audio. So, first of all, if you guys aren't subscribed to his channel, you should go subscribe to him. He's got an excellent channel over there. Uh, he literally shows you how to make the brown note. <laughs> and um, all right, I might be the only one that laughed at that, but I will laugh anyway. So Mullen actually did something really cool. And I didn't tell him I was going to do this, but my yeah. kids love Transformers. And I told him a really cool Transformer story of my kids. 
And he's like, oh, I have boxes of just sitting around. Give me your address. So I gave him my address and he sent a box of like 70 Transformers for the kids. It was just awesome. It was really cool. So huge shout out to um, to, to Sean or to Mullen. I appreciate that. That was really cool. The kids still like talk about it like every day. They're, they tell their friends, oh, you should see dad's friend. <laughs> it was really cool. And someone had commented that I would put Stinger above Scar. I would put pretty much everything above Scar. Not that there's anything wrong with Scar, but Scar has the uh, budget, has the market cornered for budget gear. They make really good. If you're looking for good, cheap stuff, Scar's a good. Scar does have a kit on Amazon. There should be a link in the product description for you can get basically the same thing for, but not as good for 300 bucks. Yeah. They're they're impressive for the price. No, <laughs> no, no, not even they're that. Just, okay, just, no, no, no. They're just they're, they're just, just cheap. I don't know. They're just cheap. There's nothing wrong with them. Some of their higher end stuff's really powerful, but they're just inexpensive, and they're nothing. There's nothing wrong with them. I just can't really get behind them. So speaking of inexpensive, nothing real special about subwoofers comes mine on my list for home theater. And we've talked about this one before. Let's say you have $150 and you just want a subwoofer. Maybe you already have your amplifier. And if you don't, I'm still going to show you how to get a cheap amplifier with it. You can still do everything for like 400 bucks. And you're just like, I just want a subwoofer for 150 bucks. You know home. which one I'm going with? For you're home. doing the ISO 100. The ISO 100? That's exactly what I'm doing. You know, <laughs> that thing is crazy good. So ISO 100 is one that we actually did on the channel. They're four GRS subwoofers. I think they're like 25 or 30 bucks now a pop. So you can use the code TOYD uh, and get 5% off. So if you want, that'll help you out a little. But those things, if when you do, you, you buy four of them, you put yeah. them in an isobaric clamshell configuration, and I have, you know, just follow the links down below. Guys, we put all the links to everything. We're not going to get to everything. So just check the links down below. They'll put it on there. But that thing you can build and it has the output of basically an 18 inch Ultimax. I mean, it's insane. And it goes down way below 20 hertz, better than what you're going to be buying. If you're going to be buying a subwoofer in that price range. It's just it's just unreal what that thing can do now that. You know, if you have to buy an amplifier, then people are like, well, you're talking only the subwoofer you have to buy. It. You're right. But you can buy a cheap amplifier like a Dayton Audio 250 to 300 watt. Actually, you could even buy the Young 300 watt, which is what, like 150 bucks. I've so you're looking got at one of the Young 350s. That's what I'm using right now. Maybe it was a 250. Maybe it was, it was three, I think. And that's, that's what I think it's it works fine. Yeah. yeah, it works fine. It gets the job done. And it was not very expensive at all. Yeah, I, so you know, when you it's built the one, ISO 100, you use the you use the 10 inch driver. Is that right? I did, and I used. I'm sorry, did I say 12 inch? I'm just clarifying. I, I just wanted to make sure because I've I used I used their 12 for a couple of things, and I think you used actually the, 10. Yeah. the 12 is now 35 I, bucks, or it was last I time. I did I use the 10. You're right. I did use the 10, and Dayton Audio actually has a new play amplifier now, the SPA 300D, which is a Class D amplifier for 150 bucks. You could easily power that to the same level as an Ultimax. So you need less right. money for right. the power. You get the four subwoofers. The box is kind of big, but I build it into an end table. Like I always tell people, build it into an end table or coffee table. You're good to go. 150 plus, you know, about a hundred dollars in subs. You're at 250 bucks ports box, say 350 and, and you're done. You know, you yep. know, assuming like all your building stuff. That's crazy. Be hard to beat it for the money. I mean, basically, just to get an Ultimax 18, you're at 250 bucks. And I'm not going to say it sounds right. as good as an Ultimax 18. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying for the value for the money, it's great. They're a little noisier right. than like better sales, but they're good. I, I would definitely do it. One of the guys I remember built it on the forum and he posted a video. Unfortunately, it got lost. I think it might still be on there, but he posted a video on there. And he's playing test tones on that thing. And all of a sudden you hear his wife from like the other side of the house yelling, why are the dishes shaking in the kitchen? 
it's just it's really fun like it, it's it's completely unexpected too what else you got Awesome. Thanks, Brian. That's exciting. I, I hope that you do uh, an amp build. There's a lot of really cool amps out there and some that you can get for pretty cheap. So I like that. Actually, Brian, this Brian has built the Ice Power amp and he loves it. Um, you know what? Let's go. Let's do some more car audio. We talked a little bit about some home audio subs. I can, I can always oh, talk car audio, man. I can always yeah, talk you got car, some car audio. Let's see here. Oh, that's not the wrong one. I want to add this one face here, not used to it. Mm. So I do have some experience with these. Right now they're ninety-nine dollars up here at Crutchfield. You know what? Before before we go on, this is a good question. Sean Lynn asked a question about subwoofers. And since we're still talking about subwoofers, I'd like to you know. Mm. Nick and Justin, is, I found this song for all the would you rather have multiple smaller drivers or one larger driver, like multiple eights versus one twelve, something like that? I think he's talking more about car audio. Probably so, home, yeah. Home, well, I mean, especially when you're talking eights. Um, home audio, I would go... So, it's easier to pressurize a room with multiple subwoofers. We know that. You know, mm -hmm. get rid of room nodes and stuff of that nature. Right. So, typically, multiple smaller in, in different placements in your room, etc., would be better in the long run having said that if you have ever heard a 21 inch subwoofer that goes down to 10 hertz that has like no motor noise you don't hear the subwoofer at all you just mm -hmm. feel it i would be hard pressed for you to say i want to go with something smaller after that that right, right. it's like the ultimate thing. So like, that's the thing that a bigger subwoofer can do that other ones can't do. That's like ultimate sound quality right there, but he's not talking about right. 21. He's talking about 12. So, <laughs> so, so I've been, I've been mulling this. So quite a bard sent me a nice selection of subs to play with. And uh, eventually there will be a comparison video that I'm going to build that will talk about this in a car. So this isn't, um, uh, you know, I'm not worried about things like force cancellation or anything. So I do have a pair of eights um, <laughs> built, been, took, took the took the base truck out today and drove around, had a little fun riding around listening to music. And I've got a 12 that I've also built. It'll be the next video to drop on the channel. The video's done. Just got to make the thumbnail. And when I get done with that, I'm going to rebuild the four by six and a half box and hopefully do like a, a shootout comparison. What I can tell you about two eights versus one twelve. In a proper size box, the boxes are about the same size. Yeah, sorry, my stream is blurry. I don't know what to tell you. I'm going to, I'll be doing some reconfiguring over the next week to see if I can get a better internet connection in here. But um, so two eights versus one twelve, the box is going to be about the same size, plus or minus, you know, half a cubic foot maybe. Two eights have more cone area than one twelve, but one twelve has more excursion than the eights do. So the single 12 should be able to move a larger air volume, but you know, so if you have room, I'm thinking a single 12 should outperform two eights. The problem is when you don't have room, when you have a tight spot to fit your subwoofers into, that's where maybe two eights in a slightly undersized box might be a better idea. And that's the real question, you know, for the application is what matters. Yeah. Well, and the other problem with one twelve inch is once you start getting closer to its linear max excursion, you're starting to add more distortion. So for a sound quality build, you yeah. got that working against you. Okay, so y'all, the little meter for the internet just went four green bars. Is my am I less blurry? Ooh, <laughs> am, is it any better? Four green bars. <laughs> right. How many old green bars do you have over we here? Are, your meter. We are working. I've got green bars now my mine says i'm connected hardwired and it's working good <laughs> okay i don't, I don't I've got no green wire i don't got no green bars mine just says I, it's working or not working i'm showing nine out of ten so it's better than it was it was eight out of ten when it was blurry hope it's not as blurry now awesome uh, oh 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 brian's talking about the orchard audio amp I'm telling you, that thing is awesome. Also, Brian Romska, 
if you don't want to build one and you're considering buying one, I'm going to sell mine. So you're welcome to send me an email afterwards, offer some money for it or whatever. Um, only, only, and people keep asking me why, honestly, because I don't, I want to, I want a five channel amplifier array for my, well, actually I want like a seven channel amplifier array for my home theater and two channel just isn't going to work with that. So, um, I could just buy a bunch more amps, but I'm one of those weird guys that like my amps to match and I don't want to buy like a bunch more. <laughs> Is that really weird to want matching equipment? I don't think that's weird. I, I know it, it's probably not, but I, I, yeah, I am one of those guys. I, I can't afford, you know, a bunch of orchard audio amplifiers. Right. Right. Uh, well, that's the thing. As soon as I can afford to, all the gear is going to match. <laughs> right. That's yeah. the point. Yeah. That's the dream, right? Yeah. That's all good gear that all like, matches. I, I can't afford more of those. So we need more good videos about crossover making. I'll tell you what, Eva Scroll, I have no problem doing that. You're welcome to give me some ideas on what you guys would like to see. I'm always up that. Also, uh, if you do join my channel subscription or Patreon, we talk about those behind the screen scenes. We actually talk a lot about that. In fact, I just did a kit, just finished one. I'll have to see if I can share a picture in a minute, but of the HiVi 3.1A kit. I shared it actually on my community page. And I'll tell you that I will be redoing the crossover because it's not for my liking. Um, it is in phase. There's nothing wrong with that. But I talked about some of the things that I saw that I didn't like and where that might go well. And I've also looked at some peoples that have made changes to crossovers and showed them some of the things that I think would help it. And then I'll probably be redoing that crossover, though, in, in the next month or so. Hey, look, Excellent. looks like some people, some people, hey, look. People are saying, no, you need to match them. Thanks, guys. Although Tony G said I'm weird. Or Tony J. I mean, I can't even see. <laughs> all right. I don't know. All my, all my amps in the truck match currently. I'm about to undo that. I'm about to take some of them out and replace them with the one that does not match. It's, so. like, it's like women with their clothing, right? We always think it's weird. We're like, women, why do you need to match your shoes with your shirt, with your dress, with your hat, with your eyeshadow with your fingernails <laughs> or what you know it's like we look at that and we mock them and then we're talking about matching amplifiers we're like oh yeah we need our amplifiers to match what are you crazy what if my amplifier what if i have a blue one and a green one i can't do that in my car no, that wouldn't work at all you can't have two different no. brands that's terrible no, <laughs> no man, that would look that would look and sound terrible get out of here we're talking about function though we're talking function <laughs> that's an interesting yeah so, uh, yeah, true story. I don't know. Do you get out of the house without like, you know, making sure that you're completely matched head to toe? I, I, I barely get myself dressed. So I, I'm pretty certain I don't match. Well, you're married. You don't have to get yourself dressed anymore. P pretty certain I wear black, uh, a black belt and brown shoes. And <laughs> I, I do that all the time. I do all the time. As, as long as, as long as they're clean, they look good. So half the time I wear sweatpants around. I'm like, man, cause they're comfortable. I'm got, I've got that age where sweatpants are more, it's more about comfort. A absolutely. Uh, Sean Lynn's comment. I have two JL HD amps, which are silver and the tweak 88 is black, but at least it's the same brand. It's nice when they're the same brand. That's true. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what they make start. spray paint for. You just need to powder coat those suckers. You're good to go. There you go. That's right. it. Got to powder coat it. So you, you and I kind of talked about this last time. Someone wants to get into home theater. Yeah. And they're like, hey, man, I really want to get into home theater. I need five speakers because they want to start. I, I think everyone should start with a 5.1 setup, you know, if you can. Right. And I'm, I'm not against buying used gear either. If you can find good used gear, go for it. A lot of times, okay. though, unfortunately, used gear there can be a reason why it's used and being sold and you find out later, but, um, right. But I, I bought plenty of used speakers, some good, some bad. Some I've hit home runs on some. I have it, but absolutely do that. But if I only had 500 bucks, which is a hundred dollars per speaker, there's two that I would go for. 
Are these ones you would build or ones you would buy? Build? Actually, three. I'll, I'll tell you one that I would consider buying, even though I think it's a huge compromise. If you can build, number one, I'd go with the rule breakers. Um, I've talked about those before, but they have the nice wide off axis response. You can put them anywhere. They fill up any side, like they, they'll fill up your room. Like they're, they're great. You would really like them and you can put them either orientation, horizontal or vertical and your dispersion doesn't change, which is awesome. I think I need to build so, some. I really want to yeah, build some. And, you know, like five of them is like 400 bucks. It's, it's under $500. It's cheap. Yeah. And then if I wasn't going to go there, I would look at the classics Two by Dayton audio. Mm-hmm. They're a hundred dollars a speaker. You can build five of them, 500 bucks. And that comes with the MDF yeah. and everything cut out. So if you're like, ah, I don't want to go buy stuff, I'd probably look at the classics too. Yeah. Um, I haven't personally heard them, but I know enough people that have used them that I feel confident enough to say, yeah, they're, they're worth a hundred bucks, which honestly, there's not many speakers that aren't worth a hundred dollars for each speaker. Um, right. Unless they're your Mookie. But, um, and then if you want to buy some, it is a compromise and I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. So the problem with the classics too, is they're all TMs. So you got to find somewhere for that middle TM. Right. Right. So there's Jammo out there, which you can buy for like $505 for the whole five channel kit, no subwoofer, you know, just five channel kit. And you get four TMs like the classics twos. Right. Smaller though. But then you get a horizontal MTM center. The problem with an MTM center, we've talked about this, unless you're the only one sitting and you're sitting directly in front of it, you're going to have issues hearing it off axis. So it is definitely a compromise. But for someone that's like, I just don't want to buy it. That's what I'd go for. And then I would try to look for a better center channel when I could or even build a rule breaker. So at that price point, the Jammo you think is a good speaker? Well, I think it's like Scar. Okay. At least how you explained it, right? It's like, uh, are they good? I mean, for the price, you can't beat them. But also, audio is one of those things. It's like highly, like, do I think the rule breakers would outperform them? Absolutely. Do I okay. think the classics would outperform them? Yes. Got gotcha. you. Got gotcha. you. Do I think? But you have to build you know, the rule breakers and the classics and all the stuff that goes with them, the stain, the paint, the the glue, whatever, exactly. right? You've got to do all the stuff. And that's the challenge with the DIY. You spend all these money on parts and hope it sounds better than something you could have bought. It, well, I mean, that's kind of the issue, right? That's that's the issue. Uh, does anyone know anything about the date and big reveal in 24 days? I will tell you this. I might. No, I might don't not. tell me anything. But I'll also <laughs> tell you this. Even if we did know something, we couldn't tell you. <laughs> By the way, it's good to see Brian here. Brian hardly ever makes it on, so that's nice to see him. Okay, so Brian Romsky said he bought that five-speaker kit for $200. I don't think it's worth it for much more than $300 tops. The bigger bookshelves are really good, though. I use those at work on my desk. And, and that's kind of where I'm at. It's one of those things you're not getting... When you're buying a system that's already made at five hundred dollars, you're not getting much. Right. That's the jam. You know, they yeah, they used to make the Klipsch Quintet series, which was like nine hundred dollars okay, yeah. for the subwoofer, and there were these little little speakers. And those were right. you know, once right. again, they were really good for the money. Like it's not like but at nine hundred dollars, could I build something so much better? Oh yeah. I mean, significantly better. But that's kind of where you go. I mean, when you get to that that price, nine hundred bucks for a five point one, all the speakers in a five point one system, you're definitely at the point where you can build something that will sound better. Yeah, well, and I would say, so if I had a thousand dollars to spend, so here's the deal: I I like DIY Sound Group, and I wouldn't mind buying some stuff from DIY Sound Group and stuff. I don't typically promote them on the channel or anything because of one reason you can never buy it. It's never in stock. Right. And, you know, and then when it is in stock, you have to be by the computer in the next five minutes. Cause I don't, I don't know how many he puts in stock, but it doesn't seem like much because then they're out of stock again. So <laughs> I, there's definitely some at DIY sound group I would build for sure. But if not them, then I would go with the cinema tens 
as well. Mm -hmm. The Cinema 10s are excellent speakers. Uh, A guy recently built them on the forum. He also built the Audience 212, and he said that if he had built the Cinema 10s first, he would have never built the Audience 212 because they sounded that good. He would have just built all Audience 212s. And they're about... I think they're about two hundred dollars a speaker to build. I, I haven't done you. You, you might want to double check that, but around two hundred bucks a speaker. Right. So five of them, a thousand bucks, and those would be where you could finally hit true dynamic levels that are designed for like theater use. Jamo's right. not going to do that. The rule breakers not going to do that. The classics aren't going to do that. The quintets aren't going to do that. You know, gotcha. but if you really need something to hit you that you know, when those peaks hit those dynamic scenes hit and not have any compression on your drivers, like that's, that's where you're going to start hitting. Awesome. Okay. How about some car speakers? It was Nate. Yes. All right. What about car speakers? Tell me some cars. Yeah. We haven't talked car in a long time. Jeez, Justin, you're dropping the ball. Show me, uh, pop the screen up here. So, uh, okay. I'll do that for you. There we go. So if you're looking at some uh, car coaxial drivers for under a hundred bucks, this is my pick right here at the moment. There are cheaper ones out there. You can get them for, you can get speakers for a lot cheaper. No, you don't like these. You don't like Polk. Did you not? I've reviewed these on the channel. These are the only car audio speakers I've ever reviewed on the channel. These are the ones you reviewed? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. What was wrong with them? Mm, About everything. (laughs) <laughs> I, well they're cheap I and mean, reliable it, so they they are you know i i do like polk audio i do like polk i do like that they're like a polypropylene so they're gonna like last for a while or is it aluminum i can't remember they were something it's, one it's or poly. the other it's poly it's poly okay um but the crossover was completely messed up and it was in a way that you can't do anything about it because it unless, you, unless you take the crossover off yeah, it was coaxials like these. Okay. So it, it's not, they're not for me, but the truth of the matter is I think all probably car coaxials are going to measure like that, that have a crossover under, built under on. Under $100 so, a pair, coaxials are all going to be about the same. I would, I would probably agree with that. Yeah. So you know what? Ignore everything I'm saying. You're probably right. Actually, for the price, they're fine. Just don't use them in a boom box. Well, I would, I would pick these mostly because they're durable. Uh, they most everything Polk sells, if it's not designed specifically yeah. for Marine use is made out of components that are, you would expect to see in a Marine setup. So, so this is, you know, $99 a pair, $50 each. Are they the world's greatest speakers? No, but we're talking about different price points. So if you just need some That's speakers, true. these will get the job done. There are cheaper ones. So there you go. Whatever you <laughs> Okay, no, don't you're these, right. I mean, how, well, I mean, I, if you care about sound quality, I wouldn't get them. But you know, you you are right. They're they're going to be better than the factory system, most likely. And you know, and that's that's really what I should be thinking about in the hundred dollar range. Is is it better than the factory? And they will be better well, than you, the factory. So you're you, right there. If you really care about sound quality, I don't think you're going to buy an under one hundred dollar pair of components. People who are in the market oh, yeah. for under a hundred dollar pair of, of coaxials are in the market uh, of finding something to replace blown door speakers. That's what these yeah, are for, you're right? right? You're right. If that's your goal, I'll, uh, I'll go agree. cheaper. Get a fifty dollar pair. <laughs> I mean, they. I mean, look, there's thirteen hundred and sixty five reviews that have four and a half stars. So <laughs> you know, like, yeah. what am I saying? Uh, you know, the truth is though, they they do measure very very poorly, and the 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 problem was that they're not in phase at the crossover. And so, okay. you know, if they were in phase at the crossover, and this is what I was trying to explain to people, because a lot of people were arguing with me, you can just DSP it down. Only if they were in phase at the crossover point, could you do that? But when they're out of phase at the mm-hmm. crossover point, you can't do that because once you DSP for one spot, another, just a few inches to the left or right is going to be significantly, it's going to be different, you know? And, and so, for me, I would rather find one that is in phase the crossover point. You're probably not going to find one though. And and that's the thing right there. When you start talking about DSP, then you're you're going to want to go full active anyways. You you can't EQ out the, a null created by the crossover. <clears throat> right. And sorry, I and you know I said DSP, and really I should have said EQ, like whatever your head unit can do. Right. 
Right. You can't EQ out a null created by a crossover or a null that's in the vehicle due to the listening position. Uh, you got to move the speaker or do something different, time alignment, something like that. Yeah. So for me, that that was my biggest gripe with them. But, you know, like you said, if you're just replacing a blown speaker, they're probably awesome. You're OK. You're probably well, right. you're not you're not a fan of those. So let me ask, what do you think about these? Oh, I do feel, you know, now that we're kind of been talking about clothes, I do kind of feel like my wife, like in a dressing room coming out. What do you, how do you feel about this one? How do you feel about this one? I'm like, okay. <laughs> it yeah. really is. Eventually is. you just, eventually you just say yes. I like them. All right. I like it. Just get that Nick, one. And they're these, like, you don't really like it. Do you? Look big. <laughs> <laughs> Did these subs make my car look big? It's like, okay. Finally, I'm just like, I love it. And she's like, no, you don't really like it. You just don't. You're right. You're right. I don't. So I, but <laughs> I have no experience with these. I know oh, that the brand has a good reputation in home audio, but Parts Express carries a line of the high vice speakers uh, components for car audio. So uh, a tweeter, a mid range, and a crossover set, right and left channel for you know, four speakers, mm. two crossovers. That's cheap. 180, you know, that's not too shabby. I don't think you could build the crossover and buy the components for less than that. And it looks like they actually do come with some mounting rings and stuff, right? And one thing that I've learned, if I want to use some DIY drivers from Parts Express, they just show yeah. drivers. There's no mounting rings. You have to fabricate all that yourself. Be daunting sometimes, or at very least time consuming, but you get the mounts for the tweeters. You get some rings and some gasket material. I don't know what all that is, but it's better than absolutely nothing. So a little bit of wire. You, you've, you opened, lean. you've opened my eyes. What What is the model number of this? Hi-Vi what? C200II or 11. I don't know exactly what C200. that model number is. C200LLII? Um, I, I don't know. It's... It, Parts Express does not this, like that. Are you sure it was C200, huh? C2000, C2000. And just so ah. you know, it is a beautiful uh, component set. It clearly says in their product description that it is beautiful. So if, beautiful. You, if you care, there you go. Oh, it's got the Swan logo, logo on, on the center of that. So funny, we, we used to, when we first moved into our house, we were looking for a couch. We're like, oh, we'll just buy one used off Facebook Marketplace. You know, no big deal. You know, to hold us over while we're moving in everything in, etc. And all these couches would say, beautiful couch. And it was the most ugliest thing I've ever seen in my life. It'd be like, it'd be like, like 1980s flower couches. And you're like, uh, nope. <laughs> so I, I never trust anything that says beautiful. If you advertise yourself as beautiful, you're probably not. You know, that's, you know, that looks like a nice, it looks like a, what, like a polypropylene woofer there. Oh, this one right here? I don't think you can see it. Uh, the C200. I'm sorry. I saw oh, okay. the C200. Yeah. Uh, 2000. I'm sorry. 2000. The C2000. Oh, you have another, yeah. The C2000. Well, you know, you, you know, if, if, if your couch you were selling on Facebook Marketplace was beautiful, you wouldn't tell anybody. People know what beautiful looks like. What do you think about these? Yeah. This is JL Audio's cool. entry level line. So this is their cheapest component set. So just a standard component set, six and a half inch woofer, a tweeter, et cetera, et cetera, for 150 bucks. And, you know, got yeah. some inline crossovers. So those are, those are the crossovers, not a big crossover module, oh. little inline crossover. That's interesting. Got, I've you know, never some seen one like stuff. that. I, I, you know, really? I like that better. I like that better because if you want to cut it out, you, you can. Like literally, just oh, run very true. <laughs> it's actually gotten pretty common for component sets. Um, Kenwood has some that use this uh, style where instead of the box that you got to wire it into, this thing that it's in line in the wire. Um, it's just easier to hide places, I suppose. But um, I don't know. I'm usually not a big fan of JL, but something I've noticed <laughs> the ugliest couch is the most comfortable couch. It's He's true. not talking I, about I couches. Have... <laughs> no, you know what? We need to talk about this. Molin is right. Molin, you're right about the couch. I tell you, I had the ugliest couch ever. It's called the man couch. I got it at not Goodwill, but the, uh, what's the one where they help houses? I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. For like Salvation $10. Army? There's a leather, oh, oh, um, leather couch. No, the. Um, where they build the houses. Home. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, Habitat for Humanity. 
Habitat for Humanity. Yep. I bought it at a Habitat Humanity home store and got it for like 20 bucks. Leather couch. My wife's like, looks like, you know, 75 million people have sat on that thing. But as soon as you sat on it, you just sunk in it. And it was this brown. It was so comfortable, so comfortable that like people like her friends would come over and they'd be like, can we go sit on the man couch? <laughs> it was awesome. They're like, oh, we're on, we're on the man couch. You're right. Yep. That was it. Habitat for humanity. So the thing about JL that's got me thinking about JL a lot lately is I've, I've spent way too much of my life looking at car audio products online and looking at the prices and trying to figure out what's the best deal, the best for the money, the best for a price point. And what I've noticed is that after the pandemic, everything things mm. but it's got expensive. At the 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 price went up at a slower, like all of subwoofers, yeah. and a lot more expensive what you get. Whereas L and Kicker and some of the more mainstream brands, they got more expensive, but not by the same amount. So hmm. you know. This might have been like the percentage. Yeah, this might have been a hundred and thirty dollar component set before the pandemic, and now with a ten dollar price break on Crutchville, it's one fifty. And that gets me looking at these products, going maybe they are a better deal than I always thought they were. And my reason why I don't like JL has always been they just they're they, they're too proud of their speakers. They think they're too valuable, but this isn't too bad. And I have no idea it's their entry level, right? It's the cheapest one they sell. It could be garbage. It could be it. Um, maybe it's fifty bucks better than those uh, Polk audios. I mean, it, you're looking at a pretty inexpensive set of speakers, and you're looking at not much more. I mean, I guess it's, I guess it's, I guess it is actually quite a bit more than the Alpine or the, sorry, the, um, Polk, but still you're in the same price range. And I, I would, I would try those over the Polk because you can, you can DSP those. You can time align those. I'd rather, I'd rather do those myself. All right. Mullen said he needs to test those. He's never tested JL before. I wonder what the enclosure would look like. I mean, I think he's just doing them in a basic kind of box, right? So he's not um, for his test. Well, he's not I mean, like he, he puts his subwoofers in some very unique enclosures. You know, <laughs> Going to put them in a freezer and see how they sound. <laughs> they sound kind of cold. <laughs> uh, a little lifeless. All right. So let's talk. You know what? You know what we haven't talked about with stereo speakers. So like home like stereo right, speakers. Home stereo, like right and left like channel left and instead right. of yeah. Left like and if, right if you just wanted to go ahead yeah, for like sitting up listening, not not for home theater. Listening to records, listening to gotcha. two channel music, whatever. Or maybe you just want to start with two speakers and then build up. Yeah. Or maybe you only need yeah. two yeah. speakers. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. You know, whatever. I would at the low end of the budget. Someone's like, you know, what are the cheapest ones I should get to start off with? I, uh, I actually considered putting some name brand that I actually have tested out on the channel. And honestly, I I just couldn't think of any that I would want in the same price point as this. So in the under 200, I think they're about 160 bucks. You get them on sale overnight sensations. I would, I would definitely strongly recommend them. They have a good base presence. They're not perfect by any means. I'm not going to say that they're 160 bucks for a pair of speakers. They're pretty cheap, but yeah, I would, I'd probably start there. That would be my thing. I I don't know. Do you have, you had any experience with overnight sensations? So a lot of people, if they build a kit, the overnight sensations is kind of the first kit people build. Again, back before the pandemic, they were not that bad expensive, but now they're a little bit on the pricey side for what you get. And again, the problem with building a kit, if you're trying to save money, is you've got to finish the kit and make it look nice. But it's got those high vibe drivers. It's got that unique copper look. And so it's it's yeah. just kind of cool, right? And it's, and um, it's been around forever and it works. There's some of those speakers that I think when, if especially if it's your first build, they, they get impressive when you listen to them. You're like, oh, wow. I remember I played them for a friend of mine that is a woodworker and I showed him, I, I built mine out of like an oak yeah. cabinet. I actually built mine into like a bookshelf system and I showed him to him and he listened to him and he's like, these are amazing. And and he just absolutely loved them. Hey, we got our first super chat from DIY right. hi-fi. Happy Monday, go. everybody. 
Speaking of that, someone had asked a question, Ever, uh, Everscroll did. He said, is there a reason why they're not three, three-way three bookshelf speakers? There's not many models or kits. Uh, DIY Hi-Fi actually has one in his profile photo of one that I just built too called the Hi-Vi 3.1 kit. He does like his. I think it needs a crossover mod. There are some crossover mods out there. But I think Justin had said this. I think you made the two, the the two, right? Yeah. The two yeah, way. built that kit, right? But, yep. uh, yeah, so you built the two-way. But the thing with both of these kits is the parts are more if you were to buy them by themselves right? right. Or, or at the same price like than, than drivers, it would be to just buy the kit. Yeah, the drivers and the, the drivers themselves in those kits cost more than uh, the kit. So you could yeah, buy and I think. Not- I think on the three-way, it might be like right at the same cost, but but you're still getting the enclosure, you're getting all the speaker right, wire, getting right. all the crossword components. All that stuff would, would cost more by the end of the day. Yep. So for me, that's a great three-way kit. As long as you don't mind altering the crossover, my personal opinion. Although yeah, you'll see my video out in a few days, so you can decide if you want to yep. alter the crossover or not. Um, but yeah. Some people might absolutely love them the way they are. You know, I, I don't, I, that's the thing. Audio is somewhat subjective, right? It is. It is. And that from a, you know, bang for the buck, their kits are great value. Agree. Yeah. Like you, you can get, and, and they're good quality parts. Like high, high yes. makes good quality parts. Anyone that's seen like Swan speakers, which are a little bit more, that, that's high by same company. Yeah. High by Swan. Yep. If I were going to spend a little bit more money, Actually, a lot more money. Okay. I need like some really good ones. Okay. And I have no problem saying I'd go with the Epic Hi Fi speakers. They're about a thousand right. bucks. They go to 30 hertz. They go to 20 kilohertz. They're just awesome. And, you know, I've had so many people that have built those and speak so highly of those. People like, um, uh, one guy actually said he, he had built some CSS speakers, which would be another company I would, I would look mm-hmm. into at CSS. And uh, I think they were about the same price as the Epic Hi-Fi's. And he said he preferred the Epic Hi-Fi's over it, which is really, you know, for me, a really big deal. <laughs> and hey, don't sleep on the Tritrix kit. Uh, the Tritrix kit, the, the towers. Yeah. What, what, t- talk about, I'm sorry. You, 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 you dropped out for just a second there. You, uh, so you're in, you, was that a thumbs up for the Tritrix kit? You like that one? All right. So um, I, 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 I built those. I've, I've had them long enough now that I'm tired of them. I'm ready to try something different. So I need to do a rebuild for my home theater. But the thing about the kit, especially if you buy the MDF cabinet, it's a transmission line. And transmission mm-hmm. lines just, they do magical things, these transmission lines. I can't explain why or how. <laughs> and I need to learn more about transmission lines. But you stuff that transmission line full of polyfill and off you go. I would dare say that uh, the Tritrix, even with those little five and a quarter inch drivers, there's two of them, you can get away without a subwoofer most of the time. Yeah, and I mean, that's that's important. Oh, Brian Romsko says he'd like to get a CSS kit too. Uh, I believe carry in them actually set up a listening area now in their office. So I think you can actually go over there and listen to them. It could be wrong. I mean, I know they, they had one set up. I thought that was like forever, but maybe that was just for a little bit of time. Okay. You know, Dan Russell actually brought one, which is a good, idea. good point. I, I do actually have this on the, I actually forgot about this. There's, there's two other ones I'll bring up the Dinas, which are, and mm-hmm. I'm going to say the powered version just because there's so much fun. I like the powered version better because you don't need an amplifier. You don't need anything for a stereo setup. You can just plug it up to the amplifier and you're good to go. So I go Dynas. That's a great one. They have a powered subwoofer in them. So you can really bang. If you just want to have like fun two channel stereo, yeah. like that, that's a great fun Turn one. That base up. Yeah. Yep. It's not a high fidelity one. Like the other one's high fidelity. If you want more of a high fidelity in the, five to six hundred dollar range then i would go with the um i i do like the tritrix option as well i also like the uh pint size powerhouse that me and tom zarbo built once again it comes with its own yes 
power supply comes with the amplifier, all that stuff. It does DSP and talk about audio file flat. You're not going to get anything more audio file. Well, in that price range, I don't think you're going to get much more audio file flat. So it's a pretty cool one. So I like those. I, those are just some more options, more ideas, if you may. Oh, hey, here you go. Russ Garvin has a question for you, Justin. Yeah. How about that NVX brand? I've got some of their uh, their speakers in my truck right now for my uh, my front stage. Uh, their X series component sets they they do a good job. They're fine. Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> they do a good right, job. Um, They're fine. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm I'm ready to try something different though. I'm definitely ready to try yeah. something different. So I need to find another, I want to go back to a three-way setup. So um, I don't know what I want to do for a three-way setup, but I want to go back to a three-way. So I'd like to build some pillars or something like that. I'm kind of ready for the next thing. I've had those in the, in the truck for about, I don't know, a year and a half, two years. And it's time to try something different. Speaking of building pillars, do you have anything else you want to talk about? Maybe head units or anything? I can always talk about head units. There's always some head unit stuff to talk about. And the thing oh, about yeah. head units is uh, head units are tricky. And so let me add this to the, um, and I just kind of pulled this up because I don't know if this is a good head unit or not, but I wanted to have something to talk about. So this, this is a digital multimedia receiver. It does not play discs. And that's happened now. These things don't play discs anymore unless you specifically buy something that will play a disc. Uh, back in the day, they played DVDs. Before that, they played CDs. So for $280, you can get a Kenwood that has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is what people want, right? And it's got the right number of outputs, et cetera, et cetera. And over the, over the years, what I have concluded is that if you're looking for a cheap head unit, just go over to Crutchfield so you can order all the parts to make it fit in your car. And make sure it can it can fit in your car and it can integrate in your car. And please stay away from the generic Android stuff off of uh, off of Amazon. Um, I no longer endorse any of those ever. Um, I know you had a better experience with them than I did, but if you're looking for an entry level, um, there you go. It's on sale. It's usually three eighty now. It's two eighty. This might be a good one to look if you're looking for something entry level. All right. While while we're talking, I'm going to butt in for a second because I know you have more than you want to talk about. Brian Romska said your Gan Ganfet amp and some CSS Crichton's oh man. So those are by Orchard Audio. I talked to Orchard Audio because you said you're kind of near CSS, which is in the Midwest, mid actually Central U.S. I, I think it. I think it's Minnesota or Michigan or one of those. I can't remember, but it shouldn't be too far from Chicago either way within driving distance. My understanding is Orchard Audio and CSS are going to be actually in the same room. I don't know if they're going to be like together in Axbona in Chicago, which is coming up next month. So, you know, if you want to hear them together, it's possible they can. You could ask CSS if they're going to be together. I think they're in the same room. Um, I could be wrong about that, but I, I thought they were in the same room. But you could double check with them. So that might be something you want to check into. Ann Arbor, Michigan. Yeah, Michigan. I thought it. I thought it was Michigan, but I was like, ah, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Yes, yeah, someone had mentioned that but earlier yeah, it in might be the a stream. So I forget who it was. Um, I know that um, um, Aaron's audio corner, Aaron from Ariel's audio corner is probably going to be there. Oh, is he? Oh, I got to. I got to. If he is, I got to catch up with those him. things. Yeah. To Axe Bona? All right. That's in Chicago, though. Maybe I'm thinking the wrong yeah, one. It's pretty far away. I mean, I think, I feel like it's far away. What the heck? Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's talk head units some more. And uh, so if you want to put this on the screen, this will be fine. Uh, so this yeah. right here is the Alpine ILX W670. I own the previous model, the oh, W650. It's in my wife's car. I hate it. Uh, the only thing it has going for it is this slim, this slim, thin design. Of course, it can't play a CD with that design. The problem with this is it's a wired Android Auto slash Apple CarPlay head unit. 
And the previous version, the 650, the USB cable does not support uh, enough amperage to properly support charging and using uh, the Android Auto slash Apple CarPlay. So you can't actually do much at all with the radio. Um, the the cable is really finicky and picky. If you're not using a high-end USB cable, you can't plug it into your phone. So it's kind of a the thing to look for when you're looking for an affordable one is to make sure that the uh, the USB port has the ability to support your USB-C charging and the Android Auto slash Apple CarPlay, or else it's just basically a brick. Oh, okay. So, you know, that's the thing I'm looking for when I'm buying a head unit now is I'm looking at, you know, when I plug I it, if, especially if it's wired Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, does it, will it provide enough amperage to power the phone and, and, and transmit the data properly? That's what you want to look for with it. Yeah. Well, um, I, I agree because that's always been a problem with my, I've always said the same thing. That's one of the things I hate about it. I'd rather, you know, that's why I always, I'm a huge proponent for wireless because then you can plug up some type of charger some other way in your house uh, or I'm sorry, in your car. Brian Rom Romska said, Hey, I'll be in Chicago for Expo and I definitely already have plans with the cheap audio man group. I didn't realize uh, he was going. I'll have to contact him because I'd like to, I'd like to get in contact with him some more. We've been in contact on and off uh, for a while now. And I guess Aaron will also be there. I, I will be there. But I'm only going to be there for one day. I'm going to be there real quick. I'm actually going to go with my kids. Uh, they're going to come with as well. I know, <laughs> but you know what? My my wife's working, and I want to I want to make it up there. But I'm just going to go. I think for Saturday, and that's it. I'm just that's go in Saturday, Chicago. Hang out. Yeah. When is it? And then after. Oh, man, I. Let me look it up. I can't remember the exact day because I'm not a day guy. April 12th through the 14th. Okay. Okay. So, gotcha. yeah, I'm going to, I am going to head out there. I'm going to be there for a day, Saturday, hang out. And then afterwards, me and the kids, we're going to, we're going to go do something fun because they're going to be hanging out at there with me. So, <laughs> gotcha. I feel like gotcha, I should gotcha. be something nice for them. <laughs> yeah, hey, listen, yeah. we're, we're actually, we're actually out of time unless there's something else that you want to bring up. Why don't we talk about what we got coming up on our channels and then we will. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what do you got I coming will. out on your channel? What have I got coming up on my channel? There's always something coming up on the channel. Let me find a good picture of it and I will show you what mm -hmm. I have next on the channel. I see yours. So um, somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. I know I had some and I can't find him. So this is what I have coming up next. And oh, hang let me on. share the screen. I'm sorry. Let me, oh, uh, well, let you me don't have share screen. my screen. Yeah. There it is. So this is there you go. Ready to go. All right. So here is the enclosure in progress. I've got a uh, another Ooh. box that I've built that'll be next week's video. The video is already out. Just need to make a thumbnail for it. It's going to be a Savar Drap 12 and a nice gray front. I did a little nasty job on the vinyl. Vinyl is very tricky, but that's what I've got coming on the channel up next. That video will drop on Sunday. Uh, yesterday, I did an amp review. It uh, hasn't got a lot of traction out there on the old YouTube. But you should watch it if you haven't seen it because I make a lot of funny jokes in the video. And so you'll get a laugh. Ha! I like that. All right. Now, are these funny jokes like real funny or are these like dad jokes where we think they're funny, but they're not really that funny? Um, I, I can't say what kind they are because this is a kid-friendly show. So, <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So these are the hi vi 3.1s that I built uh, for you guys. Oh, wow. Care. I did paint that's a mine. Bright, and I that's did a play. bright, bold color choice there, Nick. Oh yeah. You know what they say, go bold or go home. And so I did both. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so I did like the little swan sticker they, they put on, they, they came yes. with. That was kind of cool. Yes. And then, I like that. and then, uh, I did the, you know, I did the chamfer, which is not something needed. I, I left out there. I decided not to do their, whatever you call it. Okay. I like uh, the mid range vinyl. Yeah. The, oh, yeah, the mid range. Right. 
Yeah, I didn't want to do their vinyl wrap. I was like, nah, I'm good without that. You watched me screw and that then, up on a video when I did their 2.1 <laughs> kit, and you're like, no thanks, that looks too hard. <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be an idiot on camera I, like Justin and makes makes them look. No, I've actually vinyl wrapped a few speakers. I've, I've never been a fan of them. I, I just, I've never been a fan of vinyl wrapping. I'm not the greatest at it either. Um, here we go. New speaker design that's coming out. This is the eminent center of attention. Some people have talked about this. This is an idea of what it may look like. If you want to check out the forum, uh, I put a link actually on my community page. This is where we talk about some of the new speakers that are being designed. I don't know what it's actually going to be called. So you guys can help name it, but it's got uh, two 12 inch uh, eminence woofers. And this guy right here is going to be in the middle. This is a 90 by 50 horn. And this thing's going to be cool because it'll be both horizontal and vertical. So you can place it either way. So you can use it as a horizontal MTM uh, center channel. It should be pretty cool. So I'm excited about that too. Now, one more thing that I want to share with you guys. One more thing. One more thing. Like like Columbo. One One more thing. One more thing. Center of face. I got to find a good picture because that's a... Wow. I did terrible pictures of all these. Well, while you're looking you know for what? pictures, I'll see how to people in the chat. I see, um, uh, let's see here. Danny Lee. Hi, Di- Danny Lee. Uh, Dan Russell. Uh, Bobby B is here. Good to see you, Bobby. Oh, Dan came in. Nice. Woogie's Wheeler. That's a, that's, a, that's a face I haven't seen before. Got some really good people here hanging out here. Host is in the channel. So watching uh, Christopher Ham ask a question about Alpine uh, ILX 509 versus the Exelon reference. I don't know. I haven't tried either one of those, so I can't tell you. They're both going to be good head units. Just make sure they've got the features that you need. Okay, now we're back to what you've got. you got a laser projector okay. with Google TV. I do. Okay. It's the, it, it, it is like the smallest laser projector I've ever seen. I wish I would have brought it in here. It's like it fits in the palm of my hand. It's like this oh, tiny really? little, well, it's a little bucks? bigger than my hand. Yeah. It's pretty amazing, actually. It's it's actually pretty cool. It's there, there's kind of like this tweener category with projectors where it's like, hey, under you know, people look for under 500, and then afterwards you jump up to like 4K projectors, etc. But you're like at 1500 now, right? So you're so then people are like, well, what do I do in this like in between category? Well, this might be one of the ones that could be an in between or like the tweener gotcha. category. It's still 1080p, not a 4K but it does do HDR 10, all that other stuff. So um, there's, there's some cool, cool things going on. And I will tell you this, the, it does 3d as well, by the way. So that's, it's actually really cool. If you haven't seen 3d on like a big projector like this, and I don't mean like in the, I don't mean in the theater, cause that doesn't count because that's, that's a passive 3d where this is an active 3d and there's a difference right. between the two. But it's 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 phenomenal like the 3d i actually tried 3d on it last night with my kids we watched the lorax in 3d and it was it was great i was really impressed with it It, it's a pretty cool little projector so i got this coming up on review i have not done all my tests on it yet so i'm not gonna say you know go out and buy this because i don't know if you should or shouldn't necessarily go out and buy it right right but it, it is it is it is a it is a pretty pretty neat projector, and it really intrigues me because of the size. I haven't had enough time with it to really give you enough, but that will be out this week. I'll be watching it like all week to try to figure out what I like about it. And I also have another one coming out too. I did not take a picture of this one. You got a whole bunch coming uh, out, don't you? Well, I was sick, right? So I'm trying to catch up. And for those of you who don't know, I I was sick, so I'm catching up. <laughs> Um, you know what? I don't, I don't think I can find it, but I will tell you this. Oh, here it is. Or I, you know what? I did find it. I want to okay, tell you sure. about this because this is crazy. Okay. What is it? So it's a $500 projector. Nothing special about this. Actually, they, you can apply 220 bucks off. So it's like 380. Is that 280? Okay. <laughs> so it's actually pretty cheap. I will tell yeah, you this. That is they actually, pretty cheap. they have speakers on the side on the Uh rear and they point at 45 degree angles. No, this is crazy. They say 36 Watts, which means nothing guys means nothing, but I will tell you this. 
I put this outside in my driveway. And you know, I live in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. So I don't have like a lot of necessarily external sources I'm, I'm fighting with, but I wanted to know like, cause it's all about sound, right? You know, it's all about sound. How loud is this darn thing? I turned the audio on and I was reading over a hundred decibels at the projector with the volume all the way up. Just okay. watching like YouTube trailer. 46 feet away, I was still getting 60 decibels, which, by the way, is the normal listening volume of a television. Like if you're listening to a television in your house, that's what you're listening to. It typically is about 60 decibels. 46 feet away. <laughs> like that's so crazy. Loud, I, loud enough to loud enough to sit and listen to. Well, loud enough that if you wanted to go outside and like fill a group of people, you could do that. And that's the gotcha. first projector I could say that about. I could not oh, cool. say that about any other projector. And I, I brought a friend over and we were testing out projectors and he wanted to kind of take a look at them. I'd never hooked this up. We hooked it up. And his jaw, he's like, what? His name's Eric. He's like, are you kidding? Like, we were both like, that is so loud. Like, none of the other ones could come anywhere close. It's crazy. I. Anyway, if you're looking for a loud uh, project, like I would use that for like an outdoor movie night with a lot of people. Well, cool. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Well, all right. Uh, as we wrap the show up, a quick announcement. We will not be next week. I'm going to be out of town and unable to join for the live show. So uh, in two weeks, we're back on my channel. Nick, is that right? If I got the schedule right? Sounds good to me. All right. I, I'm not. All right, guys. See, I'm, I'm out. We're, we're out. We're out.